If you look at the existing market, there are 250 million cars just in the US market and the vast majority of them are not connected. And over the next four or five years, 40 to 50 million new cars are going to be sold and they're going to be in the roads for about a dozen years. So we're looking at at least 10 to 15 years before anything major is going to change. And the vast majority of those users will not you know, get to enjoy the benefits of uh, connectivity, let alone autonomous uh, cars and driving. And uh, so you know, what I believe as a consumer at the end of the day, you know, I own multiple cars. Two thirds of families in America own two cars or more. And so as a consumer, I would like to be able to use products and platforms which allow me to have a consistent experience across applications and integrations and just allows me to uh, use all of them seamlessly across all of my cars. And uh, as a consumer, that's what I want. And that's kind of what we're trying to do with Automatic. But uh, the risk, of course, is that you know the, those platforms get really fragmented and every car maker ends up having their own. And uh, you know, that's going to be a much more challenging state for developers to go build really compelling uh, applications and experiences for uh, consumers as cars get connected. So that's a great question and there are uh, two aspects to that answer. One is that as I said, there are a huge number of cars on the roads already and if you look at the relative number of you know, EV cars that are being sold and how quickly they are penetrating the market, it's not a you know, alarming number. It's good for the environment, but from us, our perspective as a business, you know, it's not changing very rapidly. And so you know, what we are doing is going to be relevant for a very long time. The automotive industry moves really slowly. And the second part of that answer is that Automatic as a product, you know, we have started focusing on a specific use case. You know, giving people feedback about your fuel consumption is one aspect, a major aspect of what we do today, but we also do many other things like now we help you if you get into a crash. It doesn't matter if you are driving an EV car or a gasoline car, you could get into a crash and you may need help, right? So we do that and we help you find your car when you know, it's out there and you don't know where it is. Your smartphone should know, Automatics helps with that. And so there are many, many applications that you know, we have which helps the owner of uh, the connected car and uh, you know, helping them with fuel efficiency is just one piece. For autonomous cars, I'm of the opinion that it'll take a lot longer than people think it will, right? And so this is something that I've spent quite a bit of time uh, trying to learn more about. And uh, you know, the reality is that the technology and the legal and regulatory challenges, the societal moral challenges, there are many, many of them as you move towards the world of the uh, autonomous car. And uh, but of course, as we get there, we will get there, and I'll be one of the first people standing in line to buy one of them. But uh, it's not going to happen soon. And the litmus test that I kind of uh, uh, try and apply is that by the year 2020, that's a date that is thrown about quite a bit. Can I walk into a car dealership and say, hey, I don't have a license. Hell, I don't even know how to drive. I want to buy a car which just takes care of all of that for me. So is that going to happen? I think the probability of that is uh, pretty low. But when it does happen, and it will, it's just a question of uh, when. I think the amount of data that is uh, necessary for it to uh, you know, be delivered successfully is a large amount of navigational data and uh, the geographical data and you know, cars fundamentally they move us about. And so having really high quality information around that is going to be central to being able to deliver that uh, an autonomous car.